The first quarter of 2020 marked unprecedented changes in our Missouri City community, leaving a wide range of challenges and permanent changes in the wake. Coronavirus are a type of virus. There are many different kinds and some cause disease. A newly identified coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, has caused a worldwide pandemic of respiratory illness called COVID-19, and it effectively forced the citizens of Missouri City as well as the world to stay at home in man's effort to control transmission of the virus. The virus rocked the entire community, and families, small businesses, schools, and city services all felt the effects of the pandemic. Throughout the crisis, Mayor Yolanda Ford has been on the front lines leading Missouri City forward with assistance from council members, citizens, first responders, staff, and essential partners and stakeholders. State, regional, and local leaders signed a multiple disaster declaration which allowed for more financial aid to assist the region. While financial assistance was top priority, Timely communication and continued education about the pandemic proved to be equally as crucial when it came to serving residents. On Friday, March 13th, I signed a disaster declaration for the city of Missouri City. Many organizations are signing declarations to help with relief due to the coronavirus. As this virus continues to spread, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is recommending more strict containment guidelines with a heavy focus on social distancing. Mayor Ford worked with city leaders to provide key updates whenever possible to Missouri City residents. Ford provided the latest information regarding social distancing practices, the latest closures of city buildings and amenities, including the Quail Valley Golf Course and Recreation and Tennis Center, and information about the number of cases within city limits. Naturally, Missouri City residents were concerned about the pandemic. Communicating with residents proved to be a way of comfort during difficult times. Our grocery stores have plenty of supplies, so it is not necessary to panic buy items. Some stores are also offering curbside delivery, so please call ahead for your convenience. Concerns turned to strength throughout the community. Residents came together for various city initiatives, including attending food and personal protective equipment, PPE drives, and participating supporting local business campaigns. Uh, so Take Out Thursdays is an initiative we started at the Zeta Zai Sigma chapter uh, here in Fort Bend to support local businesses uh, during this COVID pandemic. The Bigger and Better Business is one of our fraternity's three national programs that we support along with uh, social action and education and so uh, we'll continue to do this effort finding ways to support the black financial institutions in our community and you know um, making an impact where we can. Throughout the pandemic, city officials and staff were committed to continue providing excellent customer service to residents. With the community spread of COVID-19 running rampant, the city made changes to operations, most notably closing city facilities to the public. It's been a tough couple of weeks uh, here in Parks and Recreation. Uh, our facilities have really, really taken a hit. Uh, one of the things that uh, we've seen is just the, the fact that we've had, had to close our facilities. Uh, we've had to close our facilities for rentals, that includes our, our pavilions, our multi-purpose rooms, but also we've had to close our f facilities for those that come here every day. And we have people that come here every day to, to not just work out, but to socialize, to see the people uh, that, they, that they see here, to, uh, to build relationships. And so uh, it's been really tough to see this place going from a bustling uh, recreation center with lots of people, lots of smiles, lots of interaction to, to nothing. We're over at the Quail Valley City Center and we've been closed since April 11th uh, due to the COVID pandemic that we have going on all over the world. Our facility is empty right now. Um, typically we have people in here on a daily basis utilizing our grill. Uh, well, we have a 25,000 square foot facility with three different event spaces. Uh, the Blue Bonnet Grill, which we're standing in now, a full stock golf shop, two 18-hole golf courses, full practice facility with driving range, pitching areas, two practice putting greens. Um, so we have a lot to offer, um, not only the locals, but people within the region to come and see our facility. We are a meeting place. We're a gathering place. That's what this facility was designed for. It's not designed for one person to come and enjoy or a, a select few. It's for many people to come and gather. And that is essentially what we have been uh, blocked from doing. And, and probably for good reason, you know, for health reason. Um, 
but that when it goes directly against our mission to bring people together, it makes it very, very difficult. And that's, and you have seen that um, within the community, people are very anxious to get this facility back open, not only to be able to, you know, come play golf and, and spend that time outdoors with friends and that kind of thing, but really just to see one another physically again, um, and with the hopes of one day soon being able to host their weddings and, and baby showers and all that kind of stuff. To further enhance the health and safety of the community, all official city meetings transitioned to a virtual format. As social distancing became the new norm, large crowds were not allowed to gather, canceling signature city events such as MCTX Fest. The annual Mother's Day event was initially canceled, but with innovative strategy, the event happened in a drive through format. City leaders continued to find ways to provide residents a sense of normalcy during these difficult times. The family at City Hall also felt the impact of the virus. One of those individuals who received a conclusive result was Council Member Jeffrey Boney. News of his hospitalization for coronavirus broke in March 2020 as he received treatment in an area intensive care unit. Many local leaders offered their support for the Boney family and expressed joy when he overcame his battle. The Texas economy began opening back up in May 2020 and Missouri City followed suit with guidance from health officials. Customers and employees are now required to wear masks whenever visiting a business in Harris County and Fort Bend County, and businesses are required to post mandatory mask signage on their front doors. To help ensure the health and safety of the community, the city has hosted multiple PPE drives. Keep an eye on our social media pages so you can be the first to know about our next drive. As the economy reopened, Missouri City cautiously moved forward with municipal operations, making decisions that keep CDC guidelines for public safety and health at the forefront. While some city buildings remain closed, premier amenities such as the Quail Valley Golf Course and Recreation and Tennis Center opened up in phases. COVID-19 has caused area families, local businesses, and schools to get creative to keep some level of normalcy. Schools throughout the state switched to online instruction, and there are already discussions for possible online instruction during the 2020-2021 school year, as the graduating class of 2020 did not get to enjoy the festivities that come with the final year of schooling. Teachers throughout the area had parades for the students, and individual schools hosted special graduations that followed proper social distancing. Mayor Ford was invited to attend the Marshall High School graduation, where she presented the seniors with a proclamation that honors their successes during difficult times. Businesses, particularly restaurants, invested in technology that allowed curbside pickup, drive-through, and delivery so families could still enjoy meals together. As the state opened up, dining rooms were allowed to open under capacity limits. Although the virus still exists, Missouri City, just like the rest of the world, has worked in living with the virus in a cohabitat way. Doctors and nurses continue to spend hours helping those who are sick, but they are not the only heroes in 2020. Other healthcare workers, grocery store employees, postal employees, truck drivers, and delivery drivers are just some of the frontline heroes who have risked their health for the community. Their dedication to work to make sure everybody has what they need will not soon be forgotten. There is no definitive answer as to when COVID-19 will disappear. However, with Mayor Ford, council members, and city staff working with residents to ensure a safe community, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. The community has shown its strength and will continue to learn and grow from the adversity that is COVID-19.